This is your Uncle Tree Jim, and I'm bringing you some more Mass Effect 2 for the PC. Last time we left off, the SSV Normandy was investigating a region of space near the planet of Alcara for Geth when it fell under attack by a mysterious vessel. As the rest of the crew evacuated, Commander Shepard stayed behind to rescue the ship's pilot, Joker. While evacuating Joker, Commander Shepard was flung from the Normandy by a blast as the ship's structure finally gave way. Shepard was left to die alone in space as her suit depressurized. Two years later, an organization named Cerberus successfully resurrected Commander Shepard for reasons unclear. She fought through groups of mechs that had been hacked by an unknown saboteur aboard the station, occasionally receiving advice from a woman named Miranda. We finally met up with Jacob Taylor, the station's chief of security. And now here we are, and we've actually got Jacob Taylor in tow. So, the only thing left to do is to keep going forward. We need to try and link up with an operative named Wilson who contacted us over uh, Jacob's suit radio. Or I should say his Omnitool radio system. I don't even know if I'd call it a radio at this time, but... We need to find Wilson and see if we can evac the station. And hopefully we'll run to Miranda at some point. And we'll see, get, to see, get to see exactly who survived the station chaos. But we're not quite sure who hacked the mechs just yet, from our character's perspective. Those of you who have played Mass Effect 2 pretty much know who is responsible, but for our Commander Shepard, that answer is still just hanging out there. Sleep mode ended. So what we're going to go ahead and do is I'm going to go ahead and enter the room. If you want to have a little bit of an easier time finding these mechs, you can take cover right here. But it's kind of funny because Jacob does have a line that seems a little bit out of place if you stay out here near the wall. Subdue and suppress. Damn it, Wilson. This room is crawling with mechs. Just keep moving toward the control room. Don't get pinned down. I'll see what I can do. Now the line I was just talking about, the line that seems out of place, is if you enter the room, uh, Jacob does have that line, this room is crawling with mechs. So if you've just entered if you decide to go ahead and gun down the mechs from right here, and then Jacob says his line, which we couldn't hear because for some reason it was quiet, and then you enter the room, Jacob will say this room is crawling with mechs. So it's a little fun, uh, I guess nerdy tidbit if you want to nitpick at how the dialogue works, but let's go ahead and keep pressing forward. We need to find Wilson and see if we can figure out what's been going on in the station. Wilson, where are you? Server room B! Hurry! They're out of control! Up those stairs, Shepard! Oh god! I'm hit! They shot me! And we're gonna take our time. I just wanna hear things from Wilson's perspective as opposed to just hearing it from Jacob's perspective. So now that we have two operatives, we can kinda hear their sides of the story. But let's go in here first, and we're gonna find another audio log from Miranda Lawson. Physical reconstruction of subject is complete but we still need to evaluate all mental and neurological functions. Our orders were clear. Make Commander Shepard who she was before the explosion. The same mind, the same morals, the same personality. If we alter her identity in any way, if she's somehow not the woman she used to be, the Lazarus Project will have failed. I refuse to let that happen. So in case it wasn't already clear, it seems that Miranda was pretty committed to bringing us back to life. Kind of strange given that back in Mass Effect 1 we did assignments against Cerberus, so it's kind of strange to see them helping us out here. But we'll find out a little bit more about it once we meet the spokesperson of the organization, the Elusive Man. But just keep in mind that for now, our Commander Shepard is not quite clear on whether or not this is a Cerberus installation, so once we go into the next room, we'll be receiving a little bit of revelation with regards to that, and we'll have a chance to react accordingly. Shepard! Down here! And there's Wilson. Bastards got me in the leg! You were there the first time I regained consciousness. Yeah, that was me. <clears throat> How about we talk about this after we fix my leg? Should be some Metagel in the first aid station on the wall. Hopefully there's enough to get him up and moving again. Grab the Metagel from the first aid station on the wall. Let's go ahead and do that. A little bit curious how the only bodies I'm seeing here are Cerberus bodies. Wilson's hurt bad. 
He needs help. Not seeing any mechs, so... Just a little, um... Reason to doubt Wilson's story. We can't get out of here till we fix Wilson's leg. Thank you, Jacob. Now, I do want to mention one thing. Those of you who come in from Mass Effect 1 are going to notice a little bit of a difference in how healing works in this game. In Mass Effect 1, you had two talents. You had Unity, which essentially brings down squad mates back into the fight. Then you have another ability called First Aid, which actually um, heals your squad but consumes meta gel in the process. Unity can be used to heal your squad mates to a certain level, depending on how many points you put into it. In Mass Effect 2, you actually have Unity and First Aid being combined into one talent. So every time you use Unity, you'll not only heal any kind of damage you've taken in a fight, but you will also bring any squad mates that have been down back to back into the fold. So just keep that in mind. Unity does consume meta gel now, and it pretty much replaces First Aid. It's, so it's kind of two in one. But let's go ahead and bring Wilson back up. And now that we've actually encountered Wilson, we will not be able to utilize the squad menu uh, temporarily. A little spoiler, Wilson's pretty much going to be the Jenkins of this game. He's not going to be with us for long. Thanks, Shepard. <clears throat> Never thought you'd save my life. Guess that makes us even now. I thought maybe I could shut down the security mechs, but whoever did this fried the whole system. Completely irreversible. We didn't ask what you were doing. Why do you even have security mech clearance? You were in the bio wing. Weren't you listening? I came here to try and fix this. Besides, I was shot! How do you explain that? I don't care who set up who. Those mechs are shooting at all of us. We'll sort it out later. We need to find Miranda first. We can't just leave her behind. Uh, forget about Miranda. She was over in D-Wing. The mechs were all over that sector. There's no way she survived. A bunch of mechs won't drop Miranda. She's alive. Then where is she? Why haven't we heard from her? There are only two possible explanations. She's either dead, or she's a traitor. Then why did she wake me up and warn me about the attack? Okay, maybe she's not a traitor. But that doesn't change the facts. We're here, she's not. We need to save ourselves. The shuttle bay is only a few... <clears throat> we can overload the canisters to clear a path through the shuttles. It's kind of funny how Wilson's voice goes from pained and agonized to very calm sounding here. Kind of strange. I don't think it was intentional, but in case it was, well, then I'll stand corrected. But let's go ahead and clear these mechs by doing one simple thing. That's it. Let's get out of here. Okay, we took him down. But this is getting tense. Shepard, if I tell you who we work for... Will you trust me? This really isn't the time, Jacob. We won't make it if she's expecting a shot in the back. If you want to piss off the boss, it's your ass, Jacob. The Lazarus Project. The program that rebuilt you. It's funded and controlled by Cerberus. And now the cat is out of the bag, folks. If you've played Mass Effect 1 and you've done all the assignments, you're going to remember certain assignments such as UNC Cerberus, UNC Hades Dogs, UNC Colony of the Dead, UNC uh, Listening Post Alpha, UNC Listening Post Theta, UNC Sigma, um, Depot Sigma 23. Uh, I think those are the ones that I remember the most. There's also a, another mission it actually has to do with a blackmailer that Chloe Michelle, who runs a clinic over in the wards back in Mass Effect 1, we had to help her out because it turns out someone was asking around about uh, Banes. So, actually, no, no, the blackmailer was claiming to be working with Banes. If I've got the details wrong, I'll just add a little um, note on the video, but... We've done quite a few operations against Cerberus. They were responsible for res experimenting with Rachni, Thorian Creepers, Hus. They were responsible for the death of Admiral Kahoku, who asked us to find his uh, missing marines and UNC missing marines. So, Cerberus has done a lot of questionable things. And now that we're fully aware that Cerberus is the organization that owns this facility and that's responsible for bringing us back to life, it raises a few questions. So we are familiar with what Cerberus is, so I'm going to go ahead and just skip this topic right here. I think I ran into Cerberus a few times while I was investigating Saren. Some kind of pro-human splinter group, right? Well, that's what the Alliance wants people to believe. But there's more to it. The Alliance declared you dead. They gave up. 
Cerberus spent a fortune to bring you back. Look, I'd be suspicious too, but right now we have to work together. I thought you deserved to know what's what. Once we're off the station, I'll take you to the elusive man. He'll explain everything. I promise. Elusive man? Is he in charge of all this? Yeah. That's not his real name, of course. Nobody knows who he really is. It was a code name the Alliance used for him. Kind of stuck. Normally, we'd probably not take up their offer. In Mass Effect 1, we were pretty dead set against Cerberus. But it seems that they have a reason for bringing us back to life, and we're not going to find out that reason unless we play along for the time being. So I think it's time for us to try and look for some answers. I don't care what his name is, he just needs to answer my questions. All of them. He spent a lot of money and time bringing you back. I'm sure he'll be more than happy to tell you whatever you want to know. It's not much farther to the shuttle bay. Kind of hate how that camera kind of resets when you try to turn it around, but yeah. Anyway, this area right here is actually the site of a little bit of a glitch you can use to get as many um, Paragon Renegade points as you want. I'm not going to use it that much here because we already have plenty of bonuses from Mass Effect 1. So, if you want to use it, that's your prerogative. But in the last video, I showed you guys one of the hacking mini games. This is actually different from the Mass Effect 1 hacking mini game. Remember, if you were on the console in Mass Effect 1, you had to press uh, certain buttons in, at the right time and, and essentially in the right order. In the PC version, you had to rotate a circle, or essentially a cursor into the middle of a circle with rotating firewalls. In Mass Effect 2, one of the mini games on the safes is to match up symbols. This is the other mini game. Right. We essentially have to match up colored text. Not quite glamorous, but it gets the job done. So let's go ahead and get to this portion. Oh, well, that one up there, I kind of missed it, but I'm not gonna worry too much. Except that our timer is going down. Generally, you want to avoid the areas of text that are red and have a cross right through them because uh, those are pretty bad. They'll take away whatever code you've managed to uncover, or last bit of code you've uncovered. So, and if you do that enough times, you will actually be booted out of the hacking segment and you will fail it. But anyway, I'm sure I'll go into a little bit more detail, but I don't think the hacking games need, a little, need much more elaboration than that. So, in any case, a little fun fact, uh, you notice how Wilson's kind of limping right now? If I can find, oh there he is. He's kind of limping, he's got the whole animation that Joker has a little bit later in the game. Well, actually for the, whenever Joker's walking, he's going to be walking with a kind of a slump like that. But as soon as you give him a rifle, or a pistol, look at him, he's ready to go. That is some pain tolerance right there. Activating. But now that Wilson's in tow, we can go ahead and use his overload. And I'm gonna have uh, Jacob do a little bit of pull on this guy. Get over here! Ah! Impact. Ah! Impact Excuse me. Oops. Backup systems engaged. Ah! Just a little bit out of practice, folks, but hopefully I'll get back into practice. It's been a while since I touched Mass Effect 2. But let's go ahead and keep pressing forward. We're actually just about done with the Lazarus Station, so... Got it! Our goal is actually going to be right down this hallway, toward that, towards that doorway. Behind that's another doorway, which will end the mission. But there's actually something in this room up here. So let's have uh, Jacob. Right. There you go. Thank you. I don't know. Yeah, Wilson only has a pistol, and that's it. So, hmm. Pretty much the only one who can change weapons is Jacob. And us, if you want to use a grenade launcher. But like I said, we're going to be minimizing the use of heavy weapons. So just keep that in mind. I've I'm also it. going to be minimizing the use of meta gel. So let's go ahead and get that, get that going, and just mess him up. And I'm gonna go ahead and head down here. Oh, 
that did not target the way I wanted it to, but okay. And with the mechs, you can actually shoot their arms and legs off. So, the minute you blow off one of their arms, they will not be able to fire, but keep in mind if they do get too close, they will use an energy pulse attack, and that's how they can uh, do damage at close range. Normally the recharge time of that pulse would mean that the mechs are not too much of a threat, but if you have a good number of them on your position and they're up and close, that can, that can be a bit of a problem for you on insanity difficulty. Just try and get cover here. There we go. Now, let's see if I can make up for my uh, poor aim. Do this. And there we go. Let's see if I can get a leg shot on this guy. Let's see. Oh crap, stay still. You know, I should stop trying to do that. Okay, you know what? I'm not gonna try that. I'm not gonna bother. There we go. Just so I can save myself the embarrassment. Let me go ahead and grab these uh, little thermal clips. We're not gonna actually need them because we're pretty much done with all the combat in the tutorial mission. So that's pretty much it for um, any kind of fighting that we have to do. But let's go ahead and obtain some free money. I'm sure this server stage is not going to need that uh, money anymore, so let's go ahead and put it to a better cause. And get paid. And speaking of getting paid in Mass Effect 2, in Mass Effect 2 there is a bit of a difference. In Mass Effect 2 you're not going to have an inventory system like you did in Mass Effect 1. Mass Effect 1 had you collecting armor, um, uh, different suits of armor, different weapons, different mods for suits and weapons, for gr mods for grenades. Uh, different Omni tools, different bio amps. That's gone. In Mass Effect 2, you get a few weapons. Weapons that you cannot sell. And you basically upgrade those weapons by doing the appropriate research project for them. So, that's a bit, it's a bit different from what we're used to in Mass Effect 1. It makes me kind of wish, uh, miss the days of being able to make a whole lot of money. I think in Mass Effect 1, I managed to. In one playthrough, I could easily max out my credits and get the pretty much the cap for credits in the game, which is nine 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 million nine hundred ninety nine thousand nine hundred ninety nine credits. And at that point, it just became it just became an excuse for me to just melt down stuff for Omnigel. But anyway, we have the final log from Miranda Lawson right here. So let's go ahead and listen in. Test subject has been recovered, but the damage is far worse than we initially feared. In addition to the expected burns and internal injuries from the explosion, subject has suffered significant cellular breakdown due to long-term exposure to vacuum and sub-zero temperatures. Despite the extent of the physical trauma, Wilson assures me subject is salvageable. The Lazarus project will proceed as planned. Okay. So we get an idea of the kind of damage that our body sustained while our suit depressurized and re-entered the atmosphere. So I can I can pretty much say that our death was not a very pleasant one. But this is pretty much the end of the Lazarus Station mission. So let's go over here and we're gonna find Miranda Lawson behind this door. So let's go ahead and reunite and we're gonna say goodbye to our squad mate Wilson, who's gonna be leaving us for the duration of the game. Come on, through here. We're almost at the... Miranda, but you are... Dead? What the hell are you doing? My job. Wilson betrayed us all. I'm gonna say this. I prefer Jenkins to Wilson, but still. That was pretty cold-blooded. 
I think if our shepherd saw someone do that, a gun someone down in cold blood like that, we would have no reason to trust them. Even if you're sure, did he deserve that welcome? He sabotaged the security systems, killed my staff, and he would have killed us. You sure about that, Miranda? We've known Wilson for years. What if you're wrong? I'm never wrong. I thought you'd have learnt that by now, Jacob. You should have taken him alive, see what he knew. Too risky. I've put too much time and effort bringing you back to life to let you get killed now. You really think Wilson's capable of that? Not anymore. I'm gonna go ahead and say this right off the bat. Miranda, right now, is not a character that I would want to sympathize with. So, we're gonna be pretty distrustful of Miranda for a good portion of the intro. If you say so, what's our next step? We get on the shuttle and go. My boss wants to speak to you. You mean the elusive man? I know you work for Cerberus. Ah, Jacob. I should have known your conscience would get the better of you. Lying to the commander isn't the way to get her to join our cause. Well, since we're getting everything out in the open, is there anything else you want to ask before we go, Commander? You're the Lazarus Project's director, aren't you? That's right. I put two years of my life into this project. Into you. What does Cerberus want from me? Maybe you should ask the elusive man when you meet him. He poured virtually unlimited resources into Lazarus. Obviously, he has some kind of plan for you. Convenient that you show up as we're leaving. Where were you during the attack? Besides trying to save your life? Wilson figured out I was helping you when he sent an army of mechs to take me out. I got here as soon as I could. Probably a little too soon if you ask Wilson. Where are we going? Another Cerberus facility. The elusive man is waiting for you there. I'm not sure I trust you. This is the only shuttle off the station. You want to stay and rot with the mechs? Be my guest. What about the rest of the people on the station? This is the evac area. If they're not here now, they're not coming. We can't leave without knowing for sure. We need to go back and look. Don't you get it? The only one worth saving is you. Everyone else is expendable. She's right. We all knew the risks when we signed up. Without you, there's no point to any of this. Well, it seems that we're not going to get anywhere by questioning Miranda. I think it's time for us to move on, just get off the station, and see what the elusive man wants with us. I've had enough of this station to last a lifetime. Or two, in your case. Come on. Before you meet with the elusive man, we need to ask a few questions to evaluate your condition. Come on, Miranda. More tests? Shepard took down those mechs without any trouble. That has to be good enough. It's been two years since the attack. The elusive man needs to know that Shepard's personality and memories are intact. Ask the questions. Now, Jacob did already tell us that we had spent two years in an operating table. Relatively, I think about two years. But, we're gonna go ahead and ask this question anyway. Just cuz. Did you say two years? I've been gone that long? Two years and twelve days. And you were on an operating table for most of it. The sooner we start, the sooner we can be done. Start with personal history. Okay. Records show you were a colony kid. Lost your parents when the slavers hit Mindwar. You enlisted and you survived a Thresher Maw attack that wiped out the rest of your team. Do you remember that? This is actually referencing our character's chosen story in Mass Effect 1. We chose the colonist background, and we also chose a soul survivor background. And since we are a mostly Paragon character, for this one I'm going to go ahead and choose the appropriate response. I lost a lot of friends that day. Going through something like that changes you. It can break you if you let it. I read the report. Fifty Marines died on a coups. You were the only one who lived. Satisfied, Miranda? Almost. Let's try something more recent. Vermeer, where you destroyed Saren's cloning facility. You had to leave one of your squad behind to die in the blast. Gunnery Chief Ashley Williams was killed in action. It was your call. Why did you leave her behind? And if you remember Mass Effect 1, we did have to leave Ashley behind. I ended up taking Caden with me. Uh, Caden was the one I sent with the SDG Captain Kurahi. And I felt that it was appropriate to bring back the person I'd sent with the STG, so unfortunately we did have to save Caden and leave Ashley with the bomb site. I left a friend to die that day and I didn't do it casually. 
but I had to save as many people as I could. Ash gave her life for the rest of the team. Without her, I couldn't have stopped Saren. She died a hero. I understand, Commander. And I wasn't judging your decision. Everybody at Cerberus knows that cloning facility had to be destroyed. Shepard, think back to the Citadel, after the Alliance saved the Destiny Ascension and you killed Saren. What happened next? This is actually going to be a very strange dialogue option for us. Um, because the way it works in Mass Effect 2, regardless of what their decision you've made in Mass Effect 1, whatever import you use, it doesn't matter. Your response here will dictate who is counselor for the rest of the game. In Mass Effect 1, we chose Anderson to be counselor. Now let's go ahead and affirm that decision. Humanity was offered a spot on the council. I recommended Captain Anderson for the position. Yes, Captain Anderson is now Counselor Anderson. Though from what I hear, he preferred life in the military. Still, good to know that the human council member isn't going to put politics ahead of defense. Your memory seems solid. There are other tests we really should run. Come on, Miranda. Enough with the quizzes. The memories are there, and I can vouch for Shepard's combat skills personally. I suppose you're right. We'll have to hope the elusive man accepts our little field test as evidence enough. <laughs> The elusive man is waiting for you in the other room. And now we're on an entirely different Cerberus station. But let's go ahead and uh, take a look around real quick. I wouldn't keep the elusive man waiting. We're not going to be able to get much in terms of conversation from Miranda or Jacob until we have a conversation with the elusive man. The elusive man is waiting for you in the other room. But let me go in and change my armor's appearance real quick, and I think I can make him make this pretty um, fast, so... I'm not gonna have to worry about doing a lot of this off-screen. So let me just go ahead and quickly change this stuff up. Make it seem a little bit more official. And I'm gonna want to change that color scheme, because I'm telling you, that color scheme is just not doing it for me. It's not happening, folks. But let's go ahead and get that camo pattern going. And I want to get a little bit of... Eh, there we go. I think that's alright. Yeah, I think we're looking pretty good right now. Let me see if I can get this. There we go. Alright, we're done. Pretty quick, easy, and there we go. Let's go ahead and talk to the elusive man. And we're going to find out more about why he brought us back. Given the history that we had with Cerberus and Mass Effect 1. Commander Shepard. Elusive man. I thought we'd be meeting face to face. Unnecessary precaution. Not unusual for people who know what you and I know. You might be the reason I'm still alive, but that doesn't mean I trust you. You need to put your personal feelings aside. Humanity is up against the greatest threat of our brief existence. The Reapers. Good to see your memory's still intact. How are you feeling? You need to earn the right to ask me those kinds of questions. Cerberus isn't as evil as you believe. You and I are on the same side. We just have different methods. Cut to the chase. What are the Reapers doing that made you decide to bring me back? We're at war. No one wants to admit it, but humanity is under attack. While you've been sleeping, entire colonies have been disappearing. Human colonies. We believe it's someone working for the Reapers, just as Saren and Egeth aided Sovereign. You've seen it yourself. You bested all of them. That's just one reason we chose you. Fighting a war doesn't seem like Cerberus. Why are you involved? We're committed to the advancement and preservation of humanity. If the Reapers are targeting us, trying to wipe us out, Cerberus will stop them. If we wait for politicians or the Alliance to act, no more human colonies will be left. Well, it seems he's given us the company line about what Cerberus is all about. But with the elusive man, it's always best to take things with a grain of salt. So let's see what else we can find out about him and this new threat that humanity is facing in the galaxy. 
If it is tied to the Reapers, we want to know more about it. We know the Reapers are coming. We know that we have not put an end to the Reaper race. They are still out there in dark space. And we have to do what we can to keep them from... Well, in Mass Effect 3, if you've played it, you know what happens. But right now, our concern is try and delay that as much as possible. You could have trained an entire army for what you spent to bring me back. You're unique. Not just in ability or what you've experienced, but in what you represent. You stood for humanity at a key moment. You're more than a soldier. You're a symbol. And I don't know if the Reapers understand fear, but you killed one. They have to respect that. If this is a threat against humanity, you need to mobilize the Alliance. They suffered substantial losses fighting Sovereign. Their rebuilding still stretched too thin to waste resources verifying the Reaper threat. Blaming the abductions on mercs and pirates is easier and more convenient. Sovereign was trying to harvest all life in the galaxy. Why would the Reapers target a few human colonies? Hundreds of thousands of colonists have vanished. I'd say that fits the definition of harvesting. Nobody's paying attention because it's random and the attacks occur in remote locations. I don't know why they've suddenly targeted humanity. Maybe you got their attention when you killed one of them. If what you say is true, if the Reapers are behind this, I'd consider helping you. I'd be disappointed if you accepted any of this without seeing for yourself. I have a shuttle ready to take you to Freedom's Progress, the latest colony to be abducted. Miranda and Jacob will brief you. Miranda killed Wilson in cold blood. Jacob's just a gun for hire. You expect me to trust them? Wilson was one of my best agents, but he was a traitor. Miranda did exactly what I expected of her, and she saved your life in more ways than one. Jacob's a soldier, one of the best. He's never fully trusted me, but he's always been honest about it. You'll be just fine with them. For now. Now, I'm going to choose a the Paragon response here, but it does seem a little bit strange how Shepard phrases um, this... Um, what she's about to say. Is this a volunteer job or am I being volunteered? You always have a choice, Shepard. If you don't find the evidence we're both looking for, we can part ways. But first, go to Freedom's Progress. Find any clues you can. Who's abducting the colonies? Do they have any connection to the Reapers? I brought you back. It's up to you to do the rest. Now, I have, I think, in the either in the previous vid or maybe the vid before that. No, no, actually, you know what? Um, the previous vid, we only had one episode. The other one before that was basically our intro. But I did reference the collectors. We don't quite, from a perspective of our Commander Shepard, we don't know what the collectors are. We don't even know if they're responsible for the attacks. So, a lot of this is actually going to be news to our Commander Shepard. But as an audience member who's played the game, um, many times before, I think I already know who's responsible. But for now, we can go ahead and talk with Miranda and Jacob and get a feel for their characters and understand where they're coming from. The elusive man is very impressed with you. I'm eager to see if you can live up to his expectations on this mission. Now, I think our character is still going to be pretty wary about Miranda. She did gun down Wilson in cold blood, and she is still loyal to Cerberus. And Cerberus has done very questionable things during the events of Mass Effect, 2, uh, Mass Effect 1. And I believe that they are still doing a lot of questionable things in this game during the timeline of 2185. So I think we have very little reason to put complete faith in Miranda. I can't have anyone disobeying my commands when we get there. I know who I report to. As long as you don't do anything to betray Cerberus, I'll follow your orders. We will be a little bit more cooperative and tone with Miranda later on, but for now, I think uh, we're going to still ra maintain a bit of a professional stance. Actually, you know what? We're not going to be that professional. We're just going to be distrustful. What's the matter, Lawson? Worried you're not his favorite anymore? I've proven my value to the elusive man. Let's hope you're able to do the same. Are you naturally this bitchy, or is it just me? I have the utmost respect for your abilities, Shepard. It's your motivations that concern me. I believe in what Cerberus stands for. Only time will tell if you prove to be an asset or a liability to our cause. Tell me a little about yourself. Worried about my qualifications? 
I can crush a mech with my biotics or shoot its head off at a hundred yards. Take your pick. Did you and Jacob serve together in the Alliance? No. The elusive man recognized my potential and recruited me at a young age. How old were you? Old enough to know this is what I wanted. I was trying to get to know you as a human being. I'm not looking for a friend, Shepard. Stay focused on the mission. I'd like to know more about the Lazarus Project from the person in charge. I wasn't in charge. The elusive man was. If I was running the show, would have done a few things differently. What would you have changed? To start, I would have implanted you with some type of control chip. But the elusive man wouldn't allow it. He was afraid it might affect your personality, alter your character somehow. He wouldn't let us do anything that might limit your potential in any way. Can't say I like the idea of being brought back to life with a control chip in my brain. The elusive man is taking an incredible risk with you. I just hope his gamble pays off. What can you tell me about this colony we're going to? Freedom's Progress? It's a typical human settlement in the Terminus systems. They had a small military force for protection supplemented by mechs and security drones. Average in almost every way, really. Completely unremarkable. Until the disappearance. Any thoughts on what we might run into there? A lot of empty buildings and one giant mystery. It's obvious you're not interested in talking. We've got an assignment. We can talk about it or we can do it. Uh, two things I want to mention real quick. Um, in my introduction video, I did mention it's going to be a mostly Paragon character. We are going to make some rene renegade choices here and there, but only when we feel that it's necessary. There are going to be... the majority of it's going to be Paragon, but there will be some renegade choices if I feel that it is required in order to achieve the kind of character that I want to build here in Mass Effect 2. And also, I really got to question Miranda's logic. If we're doing a mission on a colony in the Terminus systems, I kind of like some additional intel, like um, building and structure layout of an entire colony, looking at a diagram, maybe a blueprint of how the colony is um, arranged, looking at areas that are vulnerable to attack, infrastructure, uh, anything that's necessary in order to understand where a colony's weak points might be. I kind of want Miranda to give me that information right now, but I don't know. I guess planning was a little bit, a little bit shit for this mission. But it seems that Miranda is at least aware of the basics of the colony. But for the time being, we need to talk to Jacob, and it seems that Jacob might be a little bit more relatable than Miranda. So let's get a feel for where Jacob comes from and why he's with Cerberus. I'm glad the elusive man convinced you to join us, Commander. I just want to find out what happened to those missing people. I still don't trust Cerberus. Noted. Do you trust me, Commander? You're a good man, Jacob. But you might be working for the wrong people. Maybe. But I thought the same when I was with the Alliance. That's why I'm here now. You said you served in the Alliance. Five years in total. Stationed all over the galaxy. Even spent a couple of years as a Corsair. I've never heard of the Corsairs. It was an Alliance initiative. They hired independent starship captains and used them for missions that fell outside official Alliance jurisdiction. Technically, we weren't part of the Alliance. If we ever got caught, they could disavow any knowledge of us. We were supposed to be free from restrictions and rules. But there was still enough red tape to sink a cruiser. I finally just gave up. Why did you join Cerberus? I guess I just got tired of never making a difference. So much of what we did in the Alliance seemed pointless. I thought things would change after the attack on the Citadel. Humanity was finally invited to join the Council, but nothing changed. Politics, bureaucracy, same bullshit, different leaders. Cerberus is different. When colonies go missing, we don't commission a team to write a report to figure out what the hell to do about it. We just go and find out. Jacob's got a little bit of a gung-ho streak to him there, but... I'm willing to give Jake and, uh, Jacob a little bit more um, slack, give him a little bit of credit to what he says, because he did take the risk of informing us that he was with Cerberus when he was trying to escort us off the station. He could have kept that information to himself, but he decided to disclose it anyway, even though it would, it could certainly mean that he would be unable to maintain our trust. Do you know anything about this colony we're going to? It's called Freedom's Progress. Don't know much else. I guess we'll find out when we get there. That's all for now. Yes, ma'am. Oh, man. Before we continue, I think that's actually going to be the end of the episode, so I just want to make some closing remarks. This is going to be... This is an informative Let's Play, but in addition to that, this is also going to be a Let's Play where I go back and I nitpick and critique the story. 
And if there are moments where I feel that the story really uh, stands out in a very weird way, if it feels like the writing seems off, if something really pulls me out of the moment, I am going to be commenting on that and criticizing the game. So uh, just keep that in mind, folks. It's not all going to be... We're not going to be showering this game with praise. For me, out of Mass Effect 1, 2, and 3, I believe that Mass Effect 2's main narrative had a lot of... Um, a lot of issues with just how much it takes a backseat to your relationship with the side characters in Mass Effect 2. And I kind of wish they did a little bit more with the main story, but it's well past the fact, so the only thing I can really do is uh, criticize and comment. But I believe that's it, folks. Uh, next time we pick up, we're going to be heading over to Freedom's Progress, and I'm still a little bit irked that Rana didn't give us more information on freedom's progress and the layout of a colony. Kind of seems important to have these details when you've got to do a mission there, but oh well. I'm sure she'll fill us in during the shell ride. But let's go ahead and make a save. And I'm going to go ahead and just tone down the critical nature of my... Um, I mean, I do want to criticize a lot in this game, but I'm going to try and tone it down for uh, the intro. Once we get into character backstories, I'm going to start putting on that... Uh, uh, critique hat, start going through and tearing apart where I feel is necessary. But anyway, I'm done talking, folks, so let's go ahead and close out here. This is Great Tree Jam, and I wish you guys a happy day, night, evening, afternoon, wherever you may be in this universe or the next. Next time, we're going to be investigating the disappearance of colonists at Freedom's Progress and see if we can find out if there's any connection to the Reapers. But for now, thank you for tuning in, and I will see you guys next time.